Hey everyone, today I have a coding interview question and it's a question that's being asked by Amazon among other companies. And in this problem, you're given a staircase with n steps. So if the given n is four, your staircase will have four steps. And that means that you can go from the bottom to the top in four steps. So that's one, two, three, and four steps. And suppose that you can only take one or two steps at a time. So if you start at the bottom, you can only go from the bottom to here or here. And if you decide to go here, you can only go from here to here or to here. And the problem here is writing a function called numWays, which takes the positive integer n and returns the number of ways you can go from the bottom to the top. So if the given n is two instead of four, there's only two ways of going from the bottom to the top. The first way would be taking one step at a time, and the second way would be taking two steps from the bottom to the top. So your function numWays should return two if the given n is two. And once you're done with this problem, think about this variation. What if in addition to n, you're also given x, which is a set of positive integers? And this is going to be the set of numbers of steps you're allowed to take instead of just one or two steps. So in this particular case, you can go from the bottom to over here by taking one step at a time, or you can go from the bottom to over here by taking one, two, three steps. But you're not allowed to take two steps here because two is not in the set. And you're not allowed to take five steps either here because we don't have enough steps for five steps. So maybe pause the video right here if you want to practice and try solving the first problem as well as this variation of the problem. Okay, here's how I would think about it. I'm going to go a little bit slowly here. So I'm going to put an outline of this video with some timestamps in the description so you don't have to watch the whole thing if you don't want to. Now I would first think about some simple cases, for example when n is 2 or 1. Like we saw earlier, when n is two, there are only two ways to get to the top from the bottom. The first way was taking one step at a time, and the second way was taking two steps. And if you label each of those steps, you'll be able to write down each of those paths. So you might label the first step, the bottom, zero, and then this step one, and then the top two. Then you'll have these two paths going from 0 to 1 to 2, or going from 0 to 2. And I'm just going to write down 2 here to show that we have two paths here, or two ways of going from the bottom to the top. And we can do the same thing for when n is equal to 1. And the only way here for us to go from bottom to the top is just by taking one step, or going from 0, let's say this step right here, to 1. So that's this path right here, 0 to 1. And then I'm going to write down here 1 as well to show that we have only one path. And let's do the same thing for when n equals 3. First of all, let's label these stairs as 0, 1, 2, and 3. The first path we can immediately find is this one, 0, 1, 2, and then 3. Let me write it down here. That's the one right here. And then the next one might be 0, 1 and then three, that's the one right here. And then we also have zero, two, 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 three. And that's the one right here. So here we have three paths. So that's what your function should return if your given n is three. And you can do the same thing for when n is equal to four as well. I'm just gonna skip over this just to save time, but you'll find that there are five paths here. Okay, so the question here is, can you find any pattern for what we've found so far? It's actually kind of hard if you're not used to this kind of thing, but I think the easiest way to find a good pattern here is by visually. So let's go back to when n is equal to three. In that case, you ask yourself, how can we go from step zero to step three? And to answer that question, you need to ask yourself, should I go over just one step or two steps from the bottom? And if you decided to take just one step from the bottom, then you needed to ask yourself, how can we go from step one to step three? But if you look at 
only this part up here, that's actually just a staircase with two steps. So when you ask yourself, how can we go from step one to step three, that's actually a problem that we've already solved when n is equal to two. Because in this case too, we asked ourselves, how can we go from step zero to step two, or go over a staircase of two steps. And I think this pattern is gonna be more clear once we relabel these steps. So let's label these steps, not from the bottom, but from the top instead. So the top step is gonna be zero here. And then this step is gonna be one, two, and this last step, the bottom step is gonna be called three. And once we relabel all the other steps as well, these steps is gonna look like this. So with this relabeling, the top step for when n is equal to one becomes zero, and the bottom step is gonna be one, and the same thing for when n is equal to two. And with that labeling scheme, these are the paths that we have. So instead of zero, one, for when n is equal to one, we have one, zero, because we go from one to zero. And we can do the same thing for when n is equal to three as well. The first path we can find is three, two, one, zero. And then the next one is three, two, zero, and so on. Okay, now let's go back to what we did earlier, going back to you know when we were on the ground, when n is equal to three. Then you need to ask yourself, should I take just one step or two steps, right? And if you decide to take one step, then you have three, two as the first part of this path. And from there, of course, you needed to ask yourself, how can we go from step two to step zero? And that's exactly the same question that we've already answered when n is equal to two, going from step two to step zero. So if you examine the rest of the paths, you know, this path two, one, zero, and two, zero, they're exactly the same as the paths we saw when n is equal to two. And you can do a similar analysis if you decide to go from three to one as well. In that case, we have three, one as the first part of the path. And from there, you need to ask yourself, how can we go from step one to zero? And that's exactly the same question. You know, this is kind of silly, but it's, it's exactly the same as what we asked earlier when n is equal to one. And in that case, the rest of the path is just one zero. And that's of course exactly the same as the path we had for when n is equal to one. So basically what we found here is that for when n is equal to three, these first two paths is the same as the paths we had for when n is equal to two. And the last path is the same as the path we had for when n is equal to one. And based on that, we can write that num ways of three or the number of ways of climbing over a staircase of three steps is equal to num ways of two plus num ways of one. And actually in general, this should be num ways of n is equal to num ways of n minus one plus num ways of n minus two. So you can check that, for example, for when n is equal to four. Num ways of four, as you can see, is five here, and that's num ways of three, which is three, plus num ways of two, which is two. So two plus three, which is five. And uh, here you might say, what about when n is equal to zero? I would actually argue that in that case, num ways of zero should be one. And here's how I think about it. It's sort of like asking yourself, how many ways are there to climb over a staircase of zero steps? Or how can we get from step zero right here to step zero, which is also the top? Well, let's say you're standing on step zero at the bottom and then boom, you're at the top, step zero. So this is kind of silly, but the only way to get from step zero to step zero is just zero, this path right here. So we only have one, and that's why num ways of zero should be one. Anyway, let's now think about how we can use this recursive relationship to write some code. Okay, so this is the recursive relationship that we found earlier. And to find a recursive function with that, we need to find base cases. One choice would be to choose one and two, but I would argue that the simpler choice is these two, zero and one. 
and with that we'll have these base cases num ways of 0 and num ways of 1 being equal to 1 and based on that we can write our recursive function we're going to call it num ways of course it's going to take n a positive integer and then let's first take care of the base case that's when n is equal to 0 or 1 we're just going to return 1 and if that's not the case or else we're going to return the sum of num ways n minus 1 and num ways n minus 2. Now examining this function you probably see that this is just like the Fibonacci sequence and uh, you might also see that this is not the most efficient way to find num ways. To see why let's just quickly examine when n is equal to 4 or when you call nw of 4 or num ways of 4. To find the return value of nw of 4 you need to first find the return values for nw of 3 and nw of 2. And to compute nw of 3 or num ways of 3, you need to first compute nw of 2 and nw of 1 and so on. And just looking at this tree, you see that nw of 2 is repeated twice and that's wasteful. And it's wasteful because we need to repeat the same computation twice to find the value of nw of 2. And this problem gets worse and worse as n becomes larger and larger. So let's see how we can fix that. We can fix it with dynamic programming. And one way to implement it would be with a bottom-up approach. So let me just quickly explain the idea here. For the bottom-up approach, we're going to use this table of n and numways of n. And at the beginning, we don't have the values for numways of n. And let's say, as an example, we're trying to find the value of numways of 4. So n is equal to 4. In that case, we'll first construct an array of length 5 or length n plus 1. And then we'll know right away that the first two elements of that array should be 1 because that's the base case that we have here. And after that, we'll find a value for each element by adding up the two previous elements. So 1 plus 1 equals 2 and then 1 plus 2 equals 3 and so on. And once we find the value that we were looking for, which is 5 in this case, we'll just return it from our function. And that approach is going to look like this in code. We're going to call this function numways bottom up, and it's going to take a positive integer n. And first of all, we're going to take care of the base cases. When n is equal to 0 or 1, we're going to return 1. And otherwise, or if we haven't returned yet, we're going to initialize an array, an integer array of length n plus 1, and then we're going to assign it to a variable called nums. And then we're going to set the first two numbers of this array, nums0 and nums1 to 1. And after that, we're going to run a for loop for i from 2, that's 2 right here, up to n, that's for example 4. And for each of those i, nums i, or the current element that we're examining, should be the sum of the previous two elements, nums i minus 1 and nums i minus 2. And after we find the last number of this array, or nums of n, we're just going to return that. Now this function works just fine, but if you want to make it more efficient, or if you want to save more space, there's a way to do that. So when you're running this for loop, when i is equal to, for example, 3 right here, to find num ways of 3 right here, you don't need all the elements in the array. All you need is the two previous elements. So basically, you only need to store only two elements at a time as you go through this for loop. So you can store these two elements, and then these two elements, and these two elements, and so on. And that way, you can save some space. So anyway, this is my solution to the first problem. Let's take a look at the variation I told you about. As I explained earlier, in this variation of the problem, you're given n as well as x, which is a set of numbers of steps you can take at a time. And let's solve this problem recursively as well. And we're going to base our recursive solution to this problem on the recursive solution that we saw earlier to the previous problem. So we have the function we saw earlier, num ways, the only difference from what we saw earlier is the fact that we don't have an else statement. And with the same kind of argument that I used earlier, you should be able to find this recursive relationship. 
num ways of n is the sum of num ways of n minus 1 and num ways of n minus 3 and num ways of n minus 5 if the given x is this one, 1, 3, and 5. So based on this function and based on this recursive relationship, your intuition might say that your function, let's call it num ways x, should look like this. Again, I'm assuming that x is 1, 3, 5 for now. And this says the base case, when n is equal to 0, we should return 1. And otherwise, we should return the sum of num ways of n minus 1, n minus 3, and n minus 5. But this function is not going to work. So when n is, for example, 2, num ways of n minus 3 would be num ways of minus 1, and num ways of minus 1 isn't defined well. So let's see how we can fix it. I would fix it by only adding num ways of n minus 3 to the total that we're going to return only when n minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Because only when n minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0, num ways of n minus 3 is well defined. And we're going to do the same thing for num ways of n minus 5 as well. And let's see how that might look like in code here. I'm going to call this new function num ways x as well. Of course, it's going to take a positive integer n and returns the number of ways you can climb over a staircase of n steps. We'll first take care of the base case. When n is equal to 0, we're going to return 1. And then we're going to define a new variable called total. We're going to assign 0 to it. And after that, we're going to run a for loop for each i in this set, 1, 3, 5, for example. And only when n minus i is greater than or equal to 0, we're going to add num ways x of n minus i to total. And at the end of this function, we'll just return total. Okay, so this function works, but just like we saw earlier, this is not the most efficient way to do it. So let's see how we can fix it with a bottom-up approach again. Let's call our bottom-up function num ways x bottom up. And in this function, first of all, we're going to take care of the base case. If n is equal to 0, we should return 1. And then just like the bottom-up approach we saw earlier for the previous problem, we're going to define an integer array whose length is n plus 1. And then we're going to assign it to nums. And we're going to set the first element of this array to 1. After that, we're going to run a for loop for i from 1 up to n. And in this for loop, we're going to do pretty much exactly the same thing as what we did earlier in this portion of the code. So this is just the recursive solution that we developed earlier. So in this for loop, first of all, we're going to define a variable called total to 0. And then we're going to run another for loop inside this for loop. And that's going to say for each j in this set, for example, 1, 3, and 5, only if i minus j is greater than or equal to 0, we're going to add nums of i minus j to total. And nums of i minus j here corresponds to num ways x of i minus j. So that's the number of ways we can climb over a staircase of i minus j steps. And after this inner for loop for each j, we find the value of total. And we're going to assign that to nums of i. And nums of i here is the number of ways you can climb over a staircase of i steps. And then do the same thing from 1 up to n. And once we find the value of nums of n, that's the answer that we're looking for, so we're just going to return that. And if you want to modify this function so that it works with any x, any set of numbers, not just this particular set of numbers, then you just need to replace this with x, and then have this function take x as an extra argument. Okay, now this problem actually came from this website called Daily Coding Problem. It's a website where you can get a daily coding problem just like this one. And if you want more problems like this one, I'd actually highly recommend it. It's actually a website that's made by a friend of mine who I used to work with at Google too. And if you use my referral link csdojo.io slash daily, it'll let them know that you came from here. And with that link, you can get a 10% discount on their premium subscription as well. But personally, I would say that even their free option and their blog articles on the site have a lot of value too.
Anyway, thanks a lot for watching this video as always, and I'll see you in the next one.